Uh, and I will post these um, in the recitation actual assignment once I get them posted. Okay, so this is uh, a hint here. It says coffee cup calorimeter with reaction. Um, and we have 100 milliliters of a 0 0.500 molar citric acid solution. And when I cut and paste it, I lost my subscripts, but we'll put them back in in a minute. Uh, reacts with 100.0 milliliters <clears throat> of a 3.00 molar potassium hydroxide solution in a calorimeter. The temperature of all components rises from 21.2 to 28.7 degrees Celsius. Assume the density and heat capacity of the solutions are the same as that of water. Here is our balanced reaction. A, is there a limiting reagent or limiting reactant? If so, what is it? And I've got the answer here, but we'll prove it. And uh, calculate delta H reaction for this reaction as written. Um, and again, I will say this right now. This is more complicated than you're going to find on your exam in at least one way. However, it's just a little more complicated. So, all right. So when you see that it's a coffee cup calorimeter with reaction problem, or you see both a temperature change and a balanced reaction, that means that you're gonna write down Q reaction equals minus Q solution. And the Q reaction is always the same. It's always delta H reaction times moles reacted. And the other three options, by the way, we have Q solution. We have, uh, and I'll put this up here, Q like of uh, aluminum, right? I've also seen Q of gold and Q of water. And all of these Qs are actually just materials. And all of the Qs that have just like materials are the same form as Q solution. And Q solution, so write your minus sign. And Q solution will be mass of solution times specific heat capacity of the solution times, and I usually put delta T, but I'm going to substitute for delta T, T final, minus T initial. And, um, so on your conversion and equation sheet, it does say delta T, but uh, since we have numbers for it, we're going to plug them in. Okay. Now, um, and so this, so once we have this equation, we now have to go back to our problem statement and plug everything in. And I realize I'm sort of doing things out of order because I have not determined my limiting reactant yet, but we will. And let's go ahead and fill in what we can before then. So really I'm working on B right now, but we'll come back to A. Okay, so we have our two temperatures. And note that temperature is increasing. So one thing to keep in mind is that when temperature increases, delta H must be negative. When T increases, delta H must be negative. And I wish that we had you in the lab to experience this because it's really cool. Um, and it really drives it home. Um, but we don't. All right. So, um, but let's get back to our mass of solution. So I'm going to write down my minus sign. And this is another particular uh, sticking point. We're so used 
to doing moles to grams, but this is different. So the mass of solution, and I guess I'll make, I'll make some notes down here to help you solve future problems, but this note is going to say that the mass of solution is always equal to the total milliliters of solution converted into grams. And what I mean by that is, so uh, in this problem statement, it says we have 100 milliliters that reacts with 100 milliliters. So that's 200 milliliters total. And since it says that we may assume the density of water, and water is 1.00 grams per milliliter. Well, I should add the 0 0.0. So 200.0 milliliters total equals 200.0 grams of solution. So that's a note for this problem. And I'm happy to, so are there any questions about that? So there's my 200 grams. Now it says also the, you may assume the heat capacity of the solution is the same as that of water. My heat capacity, which is on my conversion and equation sheet for water is joule, 4.5. 184 joules per gram degree Celsius. And my temperature change, my final temperature is 28.7. And my initial temperature is 21.2. So now I've got my entire left hand portion of the, or sorry, my entire right hand portion of this equation. Any questions about that? If not, now let's tackle the mole part. So now I'll leave a little bit of space and we'll come back and tackle part A. Let's find the limiting reactant. And the limiting reactant always says, find the moles of each thing and then find the moles of product. And it doesn't say which products to go to, but I'm going to suggest that you go to this thing, which is potassium citrate. And the reason I'm going to suggest this is because this one has a one coefficient for reasons that will become apparent soon. So take your volume, convert it to liters. Of means multiply, so we're going to be multiplying at times our molarity to get moles. We have 0 0.1000 liters. We have 0.5 molar citric acid, which is 0 0.500 moles of citric acid. per liter. And because we have different numbers in our reaction, we have to find our actual moles of product to find our limiting reactant. And so uh, one mole of citric acid, this thing, is reacted for every one mole of potassium citrate produced. 
and I'm going to have to go to my auxiliary piece of paper here in a second when I actually do that calculation. But for now, let's set up the other one where we have 100 milliliters of 3 molar potassium hydroxide. Oh, well, this should be interesting. Professor, if you use the water as an other, or uh, when you're doing the limiting reactant, I got the other substance as being the limiting reactant. Well, let me work it out. Um, Cause I actually just realized that I may have changed this problem um, so, so let's see, let's see what happens, but uh, I will say this, uh, there should only be one limiting reactant, then we'll prove it. We'll, we'll, so give me, give me just a minute unit or a couple minutes. Give me, uh, um, okay. So now it's three moles per liter and there's three moles of potassium hydroxide for every one mole of this K3C6H5O7. And if I do this, let me multiply these out now. So 0 0.1 times 0.5 times one divided by one is just 0 0.05. Er, come on up there. And 0 0.1 times three divided by three is actually, hold on, 0 0.1 times three divided by three, yeah, is 0 0.1, ah, oh good. So it looks like our citric acid is our limiting reactant. So uh, it's a good thing I work this because our citric acid is our limiting reactant. And the answer is wrong on this. Good. Okay, so now Yuna, you said that if you instead went to the H2O, you got a different limiting reactant? The limiting reactant was not the KLH, which was the answer, and that's what we just figured uh, out right now. Ah, uh, yes. So, yeah. So, yeah, I knew it would resolve itself. So, does that feel resolved? Yes, thank you. Good. Okay. Um, yeah, no, uh, I apologize. What happened was I changed this problem from what I'm doing with the other section um, or the other course, and it actually simplifies the problem, but I forgot to change the answer key. So, that's my apology there. All right. Good. So, and what's brilliant about this is um, this number of, so, or how about this? So this is the moles of potassium citrate, but because it's one to one, it's also the moles of our citric acid. And this moles, are the, uh, this number of moles is the moles that we put in here. So, um, I don't know if I said that very well, but the number that goes here is 0 0.0500 moles. And it's the moles that actually reacted. Moles produced and moles of H3C6 H5O7 reacted. 
So that's why I'm using this as the moles reacted because it's one to one right here. And the only thing we don't know in this equation is delta H reaction. And so we're actually very close to the answer to this problem. Can somebody work it out and verify that either you got minus 126 kilojoules per mole or you did not? What was that? Yeah, that's correct. Awesome. Okay, so prove to yourself that you can get, well, you're going to get it in joules, and so you're going to get probably minus 126,000, but then when you convert it into kilojoules, you'll get minus 126. Would anybody like me to, to see me work this out? numerically with my calculator. Yes, professor. All right, let me do it. And remember, of course, our goal was so that you feel comfortable working this out for yourself by exam day. All right, so to solve this for delta H, I'm just gonna divide both sides by 0 0.05 And then, now I'll do my math. I do did the subtraction first, so 28.7 minus 21.2, and I get 7.5 degrees. Then I'm gonna multiply it times the 4.184 times the 200 and I get minus 6270, or I get 6276, but now I'm gonna put in this minus sign by hitting the plus minus button. And then I'm gonna divide by 0 0.05. And I get 125,520, which rounds to three sig figs to, to uh, well, so that's gonna be Minus 125,520 125, joules per mole. And then when I convert that to kilojoules per mole, I get minus 125.5, which I then round to 126.